this is a report that's looking at antidepressants. The next set of slides addresses this issue. And this was a study looking at individuals who are in remission when compared to those who are not in remission. And it certainly is the case that emotional blunting is commonly reported after someone has had a trial of an antidepressant. And that continued appearance and report of emotional blunting could be the presence of ongoing residual symptoms and or could reflect the inefficacy of the antidepressant in treating that and or maybe the antidepressant caused it. Indeed. Right? And it's very difficult to disentangle that. It's extremely difficult to disentangle this. And I've struggled with this, Vlad, especially in patients I see who report a history of trauma because they often describe feeling very numb and it dovetails with complicated PTSD and trauma. And I'm trying to suss out, is this emotional blunting? Is this anhedonia? This is another report that looked at emotional blunting as a function of the class. And this is where I think we begin to see differentiation because Indeed. SSRIs have been consistently associated with emotional blunting. Is that because they're causing it? Probably in some cases, yes. Is it because they're not treating it? In some cases, probably yes. Indeed. Right? And in, in terms of SNRIs, many SNRIs are serotonin forward. Right. And, and therefore, you will see it with, uh, uh, and although, as you pointed out, Roger, one may not see statistical differences, there are definitely numerical differences right. between the classes. Now, it would also be the case, Vlad, we think that the possibility of emotional blunting would not be the case for all antidepressants. With some, it's much less likely associated with medicine, and frankly, more likely associated as with the sim uh, symptomatic expression of depression. Right. Yeah. Now, this is in fact yet another report. So we like replication in science. Is it a replicated? Is it a high effect size? Is it a reproducible finding? Yes, yes, and yes. So there's a number of reports on this, and nobody here needs to be convinced that this is an occurrence in individuals who have, for example, depression, who take antidepressants. The other part about this, which is overlapping, and again, we are guilty of perhaps trying to find a, you know, a nice crisp zone of delimitation between blunting, apathy, and emotional, uh, and anhedonia, is, is this issue of apathy. And, and apathy is interesting to me because apathy as a phenomenon, and you touched on this, Vlad, brings into consideration not only the emotional salience or the reward salience, but the person's cognitive ability to anticipate that salience. Indeed. Consequently, no, no one came, has come to my office and said, I'm here because I lack salience. They come here, I feel I have no motivation. Right. And, it's sort of, and, and as we deconstruct the phenomenology and we get into the neurobiology, it involves maybe some of these cognition and emotional.